Dr. Shaquille Abdullah, PhD, earned his undergraduate degree from Wittenberg University, his MA in Higher Education and Student Affairs from the Ohio State University, and his PhD in the Administration of Higher Education from Auburn University. Dr. Smith is a licensed psychologist and director of counseling and psychology, psychological services, apologize. She received her bachelor's degree from Florida International University, her master's degree from Appalachian State University, and her doctoral degree from Ball State University. She has been at Clayton State University for 14 years. Her passions include advocating for college students' mental health, gardening, and animal rescue. And let me introduce you, Dr. Smith and Dr. Abdul. Hey everybody, thank you for coming here today. I'm going to, to talk first. And I wanted to um, show you the flyer because as, as cute as it is and as cute as we both look, it says my degree is PDD. That's a typo, it's a PhD. So I just wanted to clarify, I don't have a doctorate in public domain or anything like that. So um, so thanks for coming. I am, uh, I do have my PhD and I'm, I am a licensed psychologist. And usually when I'm talking to students, I'm talking about how you can manage your stress, how you can have healthy relationships, how can you, you can uh, manage conflict, that kind of thing. Today I'm a little nervous because I'm not talking about any of those things. I'm talking about my story. And I hope my story can give you some thoughts that you might take to your own place and whatever, wherever that might lead you. But it should show why I have an interest in, in college student mental health. So, I graduated from high school. I was raised in Miami, Florida. I graduated when I was 17. A little young to be graduating high school, just the way things worked out. I was a good enough student. I did okay. Um, decided to go to the local community college, Miami-Dade Community College. At the time, it was, one, it was the best community college in the country, and it's huge now. Um, but I went to college because, I don't know, it was the thing to do. Honestly, it was the thing to do. I didn't know what I was doing. I was still living at home. So I started at the college and I was honestly a little lost. I didn't know what I was doing there. I was attending my classes sometimes. <laughs> um, uh, but I didn't know what I, what I was doing. And halfway through my first semester, I turned 18. Well, I became of age in Miami, Florida at a time when the drinking age was 18. So I found nightlife. How exciting was that? Um, back then we called them nightclubs. We just call them clubs now. So I, I started ha having some fun and doing some, doing some things. And sure, I went to classes sometimes. Um, but I, I was young. So here's where I'm going to tell you something that I've told probably a handful of times, a handful, handful of people in my life. But I'm getting ready to tell you all. So you remember I'm a psychologist, right? I'm a PhD. Well, my, I was taking my core classes those first couple semesters. and. I took an introduction to psychology course. And you know what my grade was? F. Oh boy. F. My first psychology class, I received a grade of F. Um, I have a PhD. That's the highest degree you can have. Uh, I'm a psychologist. I'm licensed. But I, and, and I got an F in my first, but I still I'm a psychologist. I still have a PhD in psychology, despite that start there. So, you know, I don't have a magical thing that happened to tell you how I went from there to there. Um, it's just my, what my path is. My path is. And that's what I talk to a lot with a lot of my students, is what is your path? Because mine is not going to look like yours. Yours is not going to look like yours. There's many multiple ways to, to a path. So again, nothing magical happened. I matured, um, experienced life. I moved out of my own, got an apartment, um, took a semester off here, took a semester off there. And then the one thing that did happen was that at 19 years old, I was called to jury duty. And, you know, 19, I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. So I'm in jury duty, and it was a murder trial. Oh. I was 19 years old, and this had an impact on me, and strangely enough. But I'm in this room and we're debating this guilty or innocent uh, case. And myself, 19 little year old, little old me, and one other woman 
swayed the entire rest of the group. And these were all, you know, professional people. I'm, the, I'm there 19 in my jeans and they're all, you know, suits and things. But myself and this other woman swayed the jury to our side. We voted not guilty and they all, all wanted guilty. So why that was significant to me is because I was only 19 and I didn't know much. I mean, I just spent my first two, almost you know, two years in college and I hadn't learned much at all. And so here was this life experience that was so impactful because I realized all of a sudden I, I can do something. I have some confidence in me. Look what I just did. I convinced 10 other people to vote my way. And so I thought, well, am I going to be a lawyer? I thought about that for about five minutes. And I thought, wait a minute, psych psychology. There was something fascinating about that and understanding what happened in those people's lives, how that person accused of murder got to that situation in his life. So that really got me thinking of what I might be able to do if I really tried and put, found out what I really wanted to do. So I went back to school because I decided I wanted to finish the degree. I wasn't completely sure what I wanted to do. Saw a career counselor. They said, well, find some classes that look interesting and major in that. I didn't really think that was good advice at the time, <laughs> but it may have been because I looked around. I looked at one of my friends, what she, what she was majoring in. She was majoring in psychology. So I decided I wanted to finish that degree. I repeated that introduction to psychology class, and guess what I got this time? A. A. I got my A because I had to really, you know, erase that F, uh, so it wouldn't impact my my GPA. But I I finished and I graduated with my associate in arts degree. It was supposed to take you what, what two years to earn that? It took me five. But that was my path. That was my way, and I made it my. Way. Decided to transfer to the university, Florida International. I worked a job and finished up the classes I needed. Um, it took me uh, three years to finish the two years of college because I was going part time. So basically, I graduated my, with my bachelor's degree ten years after I graduated from high school. So it took me ten years to get that four-year degree. Again, that was my path. So I decided to. What's next? I'll work. Oh, maybe I'll go back to school again because I was, felt successful then. I can do it now. Um, got my master's degree, worked. Then what? Oh, I, I can do this. I'm good at school. When got it accepted into a PhD program, that was four years, including my internship, my dissertation. Made all A's in my doctoral program. It took me many years to do my education. I graduated with my PhD in 2004. So that wasn't that long ago. And I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but it, it, <laughs> it took a lot of years to do that. And again, that was my path and I'm so proud of it because it was, my, it was so different. It doesn't look like anybody else's path. It was mine. So um, again, my, my path may not look like yours. And when I'm doing counseling with students who are maybe struggling in similar or different ways than I did in life at that time, I share that personal story and now that it's out there and everybody knows. Um, I failed my first psychology class and I'm a psychologist. What does that say? That says you, despite a struggle you might have, not knowing where you're going or stumble, a stumbling block, block here or there, you can still do it. Or you might, you might change your goal. Your goal could change after you graduate. As terrifying I know that probably is, it could happen. And that's okay. It's not gonna look like everybody else's path in life. I didn't finish in four years. I started right at high school, but I sure didn't finish in four years. You remember, it took me 10 years to get a four-year degree because I had life happening in the meantime. So um, whatever, you, whatever you choose, make it your own path and be proud of it, be proud. I, I'd like to believe things happen for a reason. My experiences in life have led me to where I am now. I'm at Clayton State, I'm happy as I can be. I've been here 14 years. I love working with college students because they bring so much special to the table when I'm working with them. So lastly, just a little plug, the Counseling Center is here on campus. It's free for you if you're a student. And if you're just wanting to figure things out, figure out what your path is, what you want to do, where you want to go in life, whether it's school related, personal related, otherwise, come see us, because that's what we do. We specialize in college student mental health, but we all have our paths too. And I think you'll find many of us 
have non-traditional paths. It's not going to look the same for everybody. So whatever you choose, you can do it. Make it your path. Be proud of it. And you can be successful too. I'm Shakir Abdullah. I'm the Vice President of Student Affairs here at Clayton State University. And I appreciate you all coming out to listen to our talk, even if it was just for the drinks from the grind. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, I learned a lot about my colleague, Christine, uh, Dr. Smith, uh, and I'm excited to share my story with you all. Um, I am a first generation college graduate. My parents attended college, but they didn't graduate. My parents didn't graduate for a number of reasons. One of those reasons is they were active in uh, really the civil rights movement and the protests that were happening on campus. And as a result of their engagement in that work, they were unable to complete their education. They were kicked off of campus and uh, didn't complete their degrees. But their legacy is one that is vast and I'll hopefully be able to share that as I talk with you all today. Um, this topic was near and dear to me because I remembered my first semester in college. Uh, my first semester in college was the first time I was away from home uh, and living on campus and, and living on my own. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed living in the residence hall. I didn't follow any structure. I didn't go to bed at a regular time. I didn't do any of those things that will help you to be successful. Uh, I didn't ask for help because school had always been easy for me. Um, I wasn't the best student, but I was always, you know, I, I could always get B's just by showing up, right? And I got to college and realized that, hey, this doesn't work. But I didn't realize that until I got my first report card. My GPA, after my first semester of socializing, hanging out, doing whatever, I had a 1.8 GPA. I had never seen anything below 3.0. And I had a 1.8. And I was, I was confused. I didn't know what was next for me. I didn't know if I would be able to continue my academic career. I got a letter over the break and they sent it through the mail and said, you are on academic warning. And that meant if I didn't get my grades up, I was going to lose my scholarship. I had a half tuition scholarship. Um, uh, it was going to really put me in a bind. And my parents have never put pressure on any of us uh, to get grades. Um, it's always been, we'll celebrate when you do well. Uh, but, but you know what you need to do to, in order to be successful. So my mother showed me the letter and I said, okay, I got it. I know what I need to do. So I had to become a bit of a hermit my second semester uh, in, in school. Uh, I had to cut back on my socializing. I had to make sure that I was focused on the work that I was doing. I actually had to go get tutors for the first time in my life. I didn't want to repeat that struggle. And so I remember I was in an American Civilization class and um, my first exam in that class, I got a C. I was really disappointed because I thought I knew history. History was an area that was strong for me. So I went and got a tutor immediately. I found a tutor, someone who had taken the class before. She talked to me, she said, hey, this is what this professor is looking for in these exams. This is how he expects you to answer those exams. And while I, never, I didn't ace the class, I ended up getting a B in that class and passing the class and bringing my GPA up. I got uh, above a 3.0 that semester and I was able to follow a pathway to graduation. What I discovered as I was going through this process was that I can't do it alone. I couldn't do it alone. Uh, it wasn't just about me, it was about everybody who was there to support me. There were so many different support services at my institution that helped me to thrive. And so what I began to do is I began to tell the story of those connections, of those resources that I took advantage of that helped me to be successful. I had mentors all along the way. I was being mentored in ways that I didn't even realize it. I had a work study job in our admissions office, so I worked in the admissions office for four years uh, as an undergraduate student, and what I discovered was a career. I didn't realize that, hey, you can go work and be a higher ed professional, that's a job you can have. I didn't know that. I was a business management major because I knew if I had a business degree, I could get a job, and I also had a scholarship from a local bank where I had to major in something related to business, um, and then every summer I would get an internship at the bank and I would get a scholarship, so I appreciated that. But what I also appreciated was the fact that I hated banking. 
I learned that I hated banking, uh, but I had this degree path I was pursuing, uh, I, so I stayed on that degree path until my senior year. My senior year, I had a mentor who said, hey, you should think about graduate school. I said, Gra graduate school, what is that? You know, they told me four years and I'm done, right? Four years and it's a wrap. And um, she explained to me that in order to move into certain professor and professions, you needed advanced degrees. And in order to do that, you needed to take the GRE, the graduate uh, record examination. And I took the last written GRE, so I'm, I'm aging myself a little bit. I took the last written GRE test when it was offered in May of my senior year of college. But I still wasn't sold on the idea that graduate school was gonna be there for me. I wasn't sold on the idea that I had to go to school for four more years. I had just made it through uh, four years of, of a business degree that it was all right, I had a degree, right? But my senior year, when I had a chance to take electives, I took like intro to psych, I took intro to sociology and all these different classes that I aced and figured out I loved, I was like, wow. Nobody told me this, right? I didn't explore my major. Nobody was saying, hey, figure out what it is that you're good at and go do that. I was stuck because I had scholarship that was connected to working in business. So, you know, a lesson to learn from that is don't let an opportunity be uh, a harness that holds you back. Just because I had that scholarship, I should have had the wherewithal, or I wish I'd had the wherewithal, the advisors to say, hey, you know, this probably isn't the best path for you because you have skills and talents in these areas. You should look into these particular majors, right? Um, and so I didn't realize, you know, how distracted I was until I actually made it to graduate school. And I didn't go directly to graduate school. I worked for three years after I finished my bachelor's degree. I uh, worked in admissions and, and in some, I worked in banking for like six months. I hated that, but it was a paycheck, right? And when I finally went to graduate school, I found my passion. I was in higher education and student affairs program uh, at Ohio State University, and I, I fell in love with the work. The theories, the ideas, all of those things came together, and I just loved it. I looked forward to class every day. Uh, I read assignments. Look at that, I was doing homework, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I was doing extra stuff, I was showing up, uh, and it really just made a difference because I found something that I was passionate about and then something that I could be good at. I really thought I was on my way as I finished my first year of graduate school. That summer, between my first and second year of graduate school, I had the opportunity to participate in a learning abroad program in, in Europe. So I was in Lancaster, England, studying at the University of Lancaster and traveling Europe, and my whole world view changed. For the first time, I got to see myself through an international lens. And it really wasn't the first time, it was the second time, but this was the time where I really understood that my worldview had been so limited that I didn't know what I was capable of. Uh, my first time abroad, I was spent some time in the Dominican Republic, and it was amazing because, you know, people thought I was Dominican, so I was, I was having a good time, right? But in Europe, it helped me to see multiple countries, multiple perspectives, multiple ideas. People questioned me, made me question my thoughts and, and, and ideas and perspectives and things like that. But it was that time, that time spent researching in Lancaster University, in Lancaster, England, traveling to Scotland and spending time in France and doing all that stuff, it really helped me to solidify, hey, I don't know anything. I need to go back to school. I want to get a PhD. It was that moment. It was that moment in the summer as I realized that I didn't know much of anything, that my future changed forever. Got back to school that fall, um, you know, did well, finished the program. But what happened was when I said, hey, I want to go get a PhD, they said, you're not on a PhD track. Why wasn't I on a PhD track? Because hey, you know, they already got four years out of me. I was just going to get two years, right, for a master's. There was an exam option and I took that. I said, exam or, yeah, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna get out of here. And they said, if you wanted to go the PhD route, then you need to do the thesis uh, process. I didn't do the thesis process. I couldn't go back and do my first year over and so I took some time off. It was, it was, a, it was eight years between the completion of my master's and the completion of my PhD. 
but it was okay, y'all, because this was my process. I had life, I had a family, things were going on, life was happening, uh, but my path was my path. You all are gonna have your own paths, but the key is ask questions, and the reason why we're sharing our stories with you is to help you to understand that you don't have to take the long roads that we took. You don't have to take the detours that we took. We had handwritten maps where you all have ways and other GPS options to navigate through your process more smoothly and much more quickly. Uh, I was fortunate. I had people supporting me all along the way. I had advisors, I had bosses who supported me, who read my work, who helped me as I did my research. All of this stuff came not because of me, but because there were so many people supporting me along the way. If you don't know, ask a question. If you're curious, explore it. I didn't know what I didn't know about the world. But from that time that I, my first uh, trip abroad to the Dominican Republic, to my time in Europe, uh, I also had a chance to uh, study abroad in Egypt uh, at the University of Cairo uh, while I was finishing my master's at Ohio State. While I was finishing my PhD at uh, Auburn University, I had a chance to study abroad in uh, Lumbazi, Malawi. And so again, I had a chance to see the world and seeing the world changed my worldview. It changed my perception of who I was and who I could be. People saw me in certain lights and I knew who I was and I knew where I was coming from, but it really helped to see myself on the global stage and understand that I had a role to play. And so I was fortunate because I had exposure. I would encourage you all to take advantage of opportunities to get beyond what you know, to move beyond your comfort zone, talk to people, ask questions. If you see someone doing a thing that it is that you want to do, ask them how they got there. That was my biggest challenge. My biggest challenge is, I mean, I was a shy person coming out of high school. I did not like communication, but I took a public, basic public address class with Dr. Katherine Wagner at Wittenberg University, and she pushed me so hard to, to move out of my comfort zone and to be engaged and to do so much more. And every time I see Dr. Wagner when I go back or every time I have a chance to talk about Dr. Wagner, I bring her name up because of her and because of people like her, uh, I now have many of the opportunities that I have today. So I'm super grateful and I'm grateful for you all to come and uh, listen to us. Uh, and, and we certainly have some time. Want to make sure we answer any questions you may have uh, about our journeys and how our journeys may impact uh, your journey. So, so thank you all uh, so much for coming this, this afternoon. Questions, thoughts, comments? Is it things that mingle and visit with you all, or they can ask questions out right here in the open? Whatever people I was about to ask, what are the, since you already got, no, you said you already got through the process for the other things. Uh, in events where you change majors and all that, do you just lose all the other things you did, or can you apply it to something else minor in something? How can you do that? No, no, that's a great question, and you yeah. can absolutely apply it to something else. A lot of times, your general education requirements will still be your general education requirements, and you don't lose track. Some classes you may have to take over, but oftentimes, if you work closely with your advisor, um, then they can figure out a way to make a class count even when you transition over to another major. And one of the things that helped me, I finished my PhD in three years because a number of the classes that I took at my master's level were, uh, they, I got credit for them in my PhD level program and so that helped me finish quickly. So always ask if you can get credit, especially if you're shifting majors because you don't want to lose any of the work and exactly. time that you put in. Because I switched majors and I'm, that's what the main thing I'm worrying about right now is like, yep. do these still work? <laughs> yep, talk to your advisors, make sure, uh, if they're not sure, talk to your faculty, they can help you, uh, sort yeah, and right. absolutely justify a course for a course. Right. Thank you. But there's no reason to panic either. Right. Because your path is your path. Yeah. And if it, if it doesn't look like everybody else's and you don't finish in exactly that amount of time, that's of okay course. too. right. Yes, ma'am. One thing that piqued my interest is he said you went to the Dominican Republic yeah. and studied abroad. Um, I'm interested in studying abroad as well with my Spanish background. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you guys are interested in doing like in the Dominican Republic and it, how did you like study abroad? No, a study abroad is an absolutely wonderful tool. 
When I stayed in the Dominican Republic, that actually was not a part of a study abroad program, but I certainly had an opportunity to practicar mi español. Um, you know, cuando visitarlo, uh, los personas allá creen que yo soy dominicano. Cuando digo yo, yo soy americano, uh, digan mentirosa. <laughs> and I'm like, so what I just told it to her, y'all. Uh, my time in the Dominican Republic gave me an opportunity to practice my Spanish. And when I was in the Dominican Republic, the people there thought I was Dominican. And when I said, no, I'm not Dominican, I'm an American, they said, you're a liar. And so <laughs> they just didn't believe me, right? And it was so amazing, I think, for me because there were so many other facets, cultural pieces, ways that people interacted with me. Um, you know, I'm not a small person, and so because I'm not small, you know, trying to squeeze into these these taxis that everybody took, you know, people would look at me like, oh, you're fat, and I'm like, well, they'll say gordo, right? And I'm like, oh, okay, I know what that means. And, it, you know, it was, it was an amazing experience because I got to experience a different culture, and, and I was treated you know, differently in different ways. I was treated just like uh, a regular, somebody who was a native of that place, and then a foreigner when I needed to be. When the uh, police came with their AK-47s and some weird stuff, I started speaking English pretty clearly. <laughs> and made sure that people understand, hey, hey. I'm Right, right, it, it ain't me. I, I don't know what they doing. <laughs> Let me get out of here. So, I mean, it was interesting because you get this sense of adventure, this sense of exploration, um, you know, in many ways you're a kindergartner again because you've got to learn what's happening in that space, right? And then you get to a point where you feel, you know, after a while, it's like, oh man, it's time to go home. I, I was good. I'm just now getting good here. So um, I, I say take advantage of it. Uh, international education is right at the corner. Uh, go see them. Obviously right now during COVID it's a little tough uh, to do some of those study abroads, but I would encourage you if anything, do a short-term study abroad. If you can't get a whole semester or a year, uh, 10 days, that is plenty of time. I was 10 days in Egypt, mind blown, you know, climbing the pyramids, going, you know, going to see the Sphinx and, and all that stuff. I remember in France and Paris, walking down the Champs Elysees, and it was just like, man, all these things that I learned about in school, I actually get to experience in real time. And then some of the connections that were amazing, and I know you asked about the Dominican Republic, but I'm, I'm going off. Uh, I, I visited the Louvre in Paris before I went to Egypt, right? And so I'm in the Louvre, I'm amazed at all of the Egyptian uh, collections and stuff. And then I go to the Cairo Museum in Egypt and I was like, oh, they stole all of this stuff from here to put on display in the Louvre. And it was just mind blowing because it helped me to pull some things together. I remember being at the library at Alexandria and looking at ancient uh, texts and things like that and looking at the Red Sea it was going I went swimming in the um, in the Red Sea it was it was amazing you know I'm swimming with dolphins in the Red Sea and uh, playing with jellyfish that don't sting you it was just amazing things that happen because you get up out of your comfort zone uh, and you go explore and you see what's out there because there's so much we don't learn about because you know as Americans you know we are so US centric we think uh, the U.S. is the pinnacle and you know the U.S. is the U.S. and there are other places that are other places and they all have uh, their features. Their own offerings. Absolutely. All I mean there's, there's so many things that, that, that you can take advantage of by just getting to other places. I'm telling you different levels of comfort, uh, different levels of welcome and for me you know being a person of African American descent to, to be on the African continent was was mind-blowing, right? It was mind-blowing to have those experiences. I remember being in Malawi and looking around, I'm like, oh man, these people look like my siblings or friends that I know, right? And, you know, until I spoke English, they thought I was from Malawi. So it was just amazing to have those kind of uh, experiences. Yeah. Uh, me encanta tu español. Yo soy mexicano y hablas ah. hablo muy bien. Es muy uh, me agradable que gente Gracias. toman el tiempo a estudiar. Me gusta. Necesito practicar mucho más, pero pero no no hay uh, uh, lugares o tiempo yeah. para hablar. So. Toma su tiempo y vas a vas a aprender. Sí yeah. sí sí sí. Cuando cuando tú tú lo ves yeah. hablas. Oh, I saw you. I was like, oh, people speak Spanish. It's cool. Está bien, está bien. Yeah. Yes, pero. <laughs> You had a low GPA for your first um, semester, you didn't pass your first course. But you said it took you a longer time 
to complete your PhD. But those who said you have a major life event that kind of puts you from mm -hmm. starting off not where you wanted to, but mm -hmm. ending up, what motivated you? Because it took you longer. So there must have been something that motivated you to keep pushing to get to that point where you are now. I think it was discovering who I was. Like I said, I was young, I was not mature, and you know, I had I had the jury duty experience, and that set up a whole other world of possibilities for me. Because I didn't consider an attorney. I just knew I was fascinated by behavior and people and how they why they acted the way they acted. And so then my confidence built when I was on that jury, because people were listening to me, and I swayed, helped sway the vote. So I think that was a big piece of it. You know, I was getting older and having more experience, but I think that was a big part of my confidence boost in helping me to say, okay, I know what I want to do now, and I now think, no, I can do it. I think that was a big part. Not knowing, exploring, and then that significant event and just gave me the push to finish what I started. Thank you. 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 Oh, you know what? I also failed disco. <laughs> um, I failed that too, but I didn't take it. I never took it. I just failed. <laughs> uh, I took it. <laughs> but look at me now. I can dance too. Now. See, there we go. <laughs> Y'all got any other questions? Any comments? Anything you want to share? Because these talks are uh, designed really to keep you all engaged. This is. Uh, the second one we've been able to do, and we'll continue to keep doing them, but part of it is we want to hear from you all. What are the topics you want to hear? Uh, what are perspectives you want to hear? Um, you know, we're, we're curious because our goal is to help you all thrive and help you to adjust uh, to the university. Because I think for us, uh, you know, we talked about our adjustment challenges, uh, and the reality is that almost everybody has adjustment challenges. I don't know anybody who shows up and thrives, right? And those are the rarest of the rare. But uh, part of the deal is ask questions, help people help you navigate uh, and, and make it to your best experience. So yeah, that's, that's really what these are about. Actually, uh, uh, this is like a place for make a suggestion or anything like that. Uh, what's it called? I know we were talking about mental health a second ago. Uh, they send frequent emails pretty regularly doing like mental health check-ins on the emails. I was actually, uh, think it would have been a little better if we actually put a poster somewhere like to advertise for it because I'd never check those emails. Okay. I know several other people don't until like, hey, you're about to get in trouble, check your email. <laughs> so maybe just slap a poster around, be like, hey, come here, talk here, whatever. You know, we can do that. We can do that. And, and this is helpful too because part of our goal is trying to figure out how we can draw you all to this event. Uh, the grind piece seems to have drawn folks. What, what were the things that, how did you find out about this event? Because I think that will be helpful for us because if it's not necessarily emails, posters are helpful, what are some other ways that you find out about events and you like to hear about events? Okay. Most students are living here. Social they, media. So Instagram, multi are there. Mm -hmm. TikTok, but you know, there's not much you can really do on TikTok, but you can find ways to advertise that essentially. Um, but Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok are usually right now the main trio that will get more students to see social events. Because sometimes I'll scroll through Instagram and all of a sudden, oh, at McLean State, yep, hey, go I to get that too. <laughs> or, oh, you know, we go from who? Uh, phone with another person, suggested friends, go we'll click on that, because they're nosies, and then you're like, oh, look, there's an event on campus happening. So most students are usually just going to be on social media as compared to seeing emails or posters. Okay. I, um, I check my email pretty frequently because my press is emailing me all the time. So I find your emails pretty um, uh, uh, important and uh, good for me. Mm -hmm. But um, if I didn't use them, Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No, that's a, I appreciate that. That's good. That's good. That's good feedback. Yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. I have a question about related to the show. Okay. So if you major in general studies, do you have to have something specific that you're going to major in to graduate? For graduate school? Not, no, no, you don't. Sometimes what will happen is if a graduate program wants you to have more specific courses, they'll assign them to you in your first year of grad school just to make sure that you have the background in that discipline. I was going to comment on about the uh, final of the events. I used to file out email. Okay. But uh, sometimes during the last minute, yep. you're not able to do it. I'm going to stay at Capitol. I have a kind of plan out. So if they can come a little earlier. Okay. That way uh, you can give me a chance to plan and go through different companies. Good advice. Thank you. Right. So I had a comment to make. So I'm a theater major, and I really would like to go to graduate school to get my PhD. Um, I was looking at different programs, like I one in uh, theater and film studies. And I was wondering, like, I guess I was having a question. Uh, how do you know, like, what to get your either master's or doctoral degree in? It, it, sometimes it depends on your, your major area of interest. So for folks in theater, the MFA or the Masters of Fine Arts is often considered the highest degree in that field. If you want a PhD, it might not be in theater and dance, it might be in another discipline, but an MFA is usually considered enough to be able to teach, um, you know, in theater and dance in those different areas. So part of it is exploring with a school that you're interested in. They can tell you the different path, I'm sorry, they can tell you the different pathways and different options uh, that can make a difference for you or that might make sense for you. Um, and, and again, your path is going to be your path, right? And we're just sharing some of the different ways that you can do it because it, it might not be a PhD for you. It may be an MFA, a Master's of Fine Arts. And that depends on the program that you're interested in. So part of what you got to do, just like uh, you did visits and explorations coming out of high school, you'll have to do the same thing uh, for, for graduate schools to find out which ones are there for you. And oftentimes, I'll tell you all this, oftentimes, depending on your major, Graduate schools will find a way to pay for your education for you. When I was at Ohio State, I had an assistantship in uh, the Multicultural Center at Ohio State. And so I worked there, they paid my tuition, and it wasn't quite enough, so I was also a substitute teacher while I was in grad school. So you, 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 gotta, you, know, you got pathways. Right. And your graduate school should be able to tell you where graduates of their program end up job-wise. So you'll want to know, like, who, who graduates from that graduate program? Where do they end up? And they'll give you an idea. Do I have a follow-up question to that? Um, is there a department on campus, like a graduate studies department? There is. Have, like, it, it's, on, it's on this floor. Mm -hmm. If you go down, uh, you know the space where students sit. Uh, there's a glass office at the end, the provost's office. In that office, uh, Dr. Jeanette wally Jean is the director, or so associate dean for graduate studies. She can answer some of the questions for you, particularly about Clayton State. Oh. Yep, so it's right here on this floor. You just okay. gotta go around the corner. All right. So, I, um, so how you found what you enjoy to do? No, no, I know. I, 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 no, no, I think, I think the important thing is to talk more about that. My, um, coming out of high school, you know, part of the way I paid for school was through work study. Uh, there were two options for me at my school for work study because I, I, I wasted, waited to the last minute. So one option was to work in the kitchen and the other option was to work in admissions. I had just got done working in the kitchen at a job when I finished high school. I was like, ah, I don't love that. Let me try this admissions thing. And so I worked in admissions for four years and progressively I got more experience. By the time I was a senior in the admissions office, I was actually recruiting minority students. I was traveling, going to uh, high school fairs and college fairs and all that stuff. So I loved it, right? And then I was really active as a student, as an undergrad. I played football. I uh, joined a fraternity, I was the president of our Black Student Union, I was on our union board, our, pro our programming, the CEC, uh, the, our version of CEC. I did all that stuff as an undergrad. I was like, man, I love 
this being a college student stuff. And then uh, when, when, when Dr. Janice Edwards said, hey, you know you can go to graduate school and get a master's degree in this stuff, that's when I started realizing, oh, I can actually have a career doing that. And so it came, my, my pathway to my career came from that, from mentorship and really from exposure and from those jobs and that involvement on campus. So that's really where it came from. It wasn't just uh, la di da, it was like, oh, this, this is all right with me, and I like this. I like making a difference. I, I think I mentioned I was a first-generation college student, but what I did expand on is I'm the fourth oldest of 20 siblings from a blended family, and so I was their college guy to help pull them through. So this was like, oh, this is, this is what I do, and I can get paid for this? This is going to be a career? And so, so that is how I got there. It wasn't uh, as... Uh, <laughs> Uh, random as it seemed. <laughs> it was it was it pretty is, deliberate. <laughs> it's knowing, knowing yourself. I mean, it was my experiences, but it was also knowing who I am, discovering who I am. I knew I would end up in a helping profession. I thought nursing, special ed, teaching, and I landed on psychology because that's how my experiences helped that. But you have to know who you are, what your interests are, what you like, what you like, what you're good at. Our career services can help you with that. Absolutely. Because no, they say there's this, there's this tool, it's called the Ikigai Plus. It's, it, it's, it talks about helping you to find your sweet spot. You find what you're good at, what you can get paid for, and you know, what you love. That, that space in the middle, that's your career. That's your, that's your sweet spot. All right, y'all. Appreciate y'all. Have a good rest Thank of the day. You. Thank you. Oh, Rachel, you wrap us up. Sorry, Rachel's going to wrap us up, y'all. All right. All right. All right. Well, retake. <laughs> I want to thank the guests today. I appreciate them and the information you gave us. It gave me something to think about, too, as I get uh, on to my next destination. And I appreciate everyone for showing up today and supporting us. And thank you. Yeah.